All right, naturally, you get a lot of uh, Lions fans. You go on any team this is. When you get you a new running back or a new positional player, and you draft him as high as the Lions drafted DeAndre Swift, everybody want to see him play and contribute right away. But DeAndre Swift got to earn the right to beat out Kerryon Johnson for the start running back position. And for Kerryon Johnson, this could be a make-or-break season for him. I think it is a make-or-break season for him. In this league, if he's going to go on to be a Pro Bowl caliber uh, running back, or he just going to be uh, just the French guy, number two or three guy in most rotations, um, this is a critical year for him in 2020. Let's speak on it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, bell icon button. Mercy Sports Talk, we in the building. Appreciate everybody for show love. Don't forget to check my other channel out, Goodfella Sports TV, right here on YouTube, man. And, um, yeah, man, you know, a lot of people are already building that competition up between Carry On and Swift, who going to be, who going to get the majority of the carries, who going to start and all of that. But um, DeAndre Swift got to come in and earn it, man. And it's the small things you got to be able to do. You got to be able to pick up pass protection, man. And that's that's something that nobody's going to talk about. You can hit the hole. You can... You know, you can run the 4-4, you can be able to catch it out the backfield, but if you can't protect Matthew Stafford in pass protection, you're not going to see the field, and that's any running back. And most young young running backs struggle with picking up, you know, you know, picking up the blitzes and picking up the free rushers and all that in pass protection. So that's something that that's something that he's going to have to figure out, you know, or that's something that has to be determined in camp and, you know, do you understand the, the audibles and, you know, the blocking scheme and his assignment because one missed block could be the difference between Matt Patricia, you know, <laughs> going home and getting fired, and it could be the difference between him, you know, going to going to the playoffs or going and or just having a successful season. So that's something that you got to continue to look at as well. Just small stuff. Carry on, got pass protection down pat. Now Swift has to prove that, but it really don't matter who is the uh, top back. You know, in San Francisco, I used him as the model. It don't really matter who the top back was. A couple years ago, for the Falcons, you know, uh, they running back, they just cut me. I don't know, I just, just drew a blank. Um, but him and Tevin Coleman, you know, they had a nice little one-two punch. You know, San Francisco with, uh, you know, even though Breida moved on and Coleman and, and Morstead, they had a nice, you know, running back by committee scheme going. So, you know, sometimes you can get thunder and lightning, and sometimes you can have really two really good running backs. So it don't really boil down to, you know, who going to beat out who. Man, it may just boil down to who do they work well together? Do they complement each other? You know what I'm saying? That's what it may, it may boil down to. Can they make it work? Can they both split the carries? And they boil down to what alliance commit to the run game enough where they both can get 10, 12, 15 carries a game. Or better yet, touches a game out the backfield. You know, everybody naturally... Is gonna give up a carry on Johnson because you see rookie running backs come in instantly and have an impact. Carry on had an impact his year one and got injured. Year two, he really didn't get going like that, but he got injured. So he got injured the first two years of his career. Usually, <laughs> if you don't get you don't you don't really get more healthy in that position as your career goes on. But Matthew Stafford, the quarterback position, was injury prone the first two years, and then guess what will happen for him? You know, he became an Iron Man. He shook that notion that he injury prone. So can carry on Johnson change his body and and, and and do some things different to prove that he not injury prone? Yeah, but his problem is he got an upright running style and he got too much leg. You know what I'm saying? He too small in, in the waist and too small and frail at the, in, the, in the legs. And he took a tremendous amount of punishment his last year at Auburn. That's the difference right there. That's the huge difference. So it's something different physically he got to do, but that upright running style, that's going to get you hurt every time. Derek McFadden struggled with it. You know what I'm saying? Adrian Peterson struggled with his injuries in college and pro with it. So physically, he may not just be able to accommodate himself to be successful in the NFL. Just being long-legged and being a long strider, he run too high. And that's, and that's what people, people got to understand. DeAndre Swift, smaller back. But 5'8", harder to hit, less body to hit, not that much leg to hit. And that's kind of the gift and the curse of a taller receiver versus a shorter receiver. Everybody liked the tall receiver since Calvin Johnson made it cool. Randy Moss made it cool. Fitzgerald made it cool. T.O. made it cool. But it's a detriment. They suffer a lot of injuries because it's a lot of body to hit. Shorter receivers don't have as much torso and leg to hit. So they survive a little bit longer most of the time than a longer 
taller receivers. And that's something that you got to figure out, you know, with, with running backs. You get that running backs that's, that's tall and long and they more six feet or long-legged, man, they're not going to survive. Adrian Peterson is, is an anomaly. He's the exception to the rule because he was built different. That boy genetics should be in the lab and they probably can cure coronavirus, cancer, and everything. Him and LeBron kind of got similar genetic pools. Real talk. You know, they built, they built, the, they built the last. Fuck Bill Ford Tough, you know, they built the last. But, you know, the question everybody want to put put them against each other as far as, oh, who better and who going to get the start of Tech Carries? You know, any time, I mean, any time you get somebody young as him coming in and two young backs, it's friction. But why can't they work together like Kamara and Mark Ingram did? Maybe it's not who gonna, who gonna start or who gonna get the majority of the carries. Maybe how well they work together. How can they complement each other? You know, but instantly when you be able to see a guy like Swift, if he can pick up and pass protection and he can run in between the tackles, outside the tackles, he do everything carry on can do and he bring more explosiveness to the field. It all just gonna boil down to, for him, you know, is the NFL too fast for him? Do the game gotta slow down? Can he pick up the playbook? Can he pick up pass protection? Can he pick up the audibles? That's just what it's going to boil down to him. If he able to pick up the playbook, especially with this virtual offseason, depending on when they're going to open up the season, if he able to pick up some of this stuff quickly, he probably going to be the choice of back out the backfield. Because he's he, he more talented to carry on. And, it, and his physical stature is built for the NFL, unlike carry on. He's short, he low to the ground. He don't got that much leg to hit. He more explosive to carry on. All the other things that need to be, he needs to prove on carry on is on the field. Can he pick up, can he pick up pass protection? Can he really run in and catch it? Can he pick up the, the playbook? Can he run the routes at a, every, everything gonna need, everything he need to prove is on the field and in the classroom. You know, carry on has already proven that he's just too fragile to be a running back here. His body type is not is not is not built for him. Now, if he come back and have you know his season and have, and have a redeemed season, and he and he really blow it out the water, then you know that'd be good for us. But I think it's more. I think it's more how they work together, and then I think it's more of who the better back. I think they're gonna have a running back by committee. I think you see Johnson get in there, Scobar get in there. If Huntley make the team, he'll get in there. See, they made they made a way for a lot of different backs. They made a way for uh, Johnson last year, McKissick, Bo Scarborough, carry on. All these dudes made made ways. But we talking about all these things and, and what's gonna work and what's not gonna work and what could and what couldn't work. But the one thing we ain't talking about is the line. Can the line open up holes for these guys? You know, a lot of people say it may not be the line. The holes are there. Carry on just not hitting them. Or Bo Scarborough not hitting them. Or Johnson not hitting them. So if they ain't been hitting the holes over the last couple of years, will, you know, will DeAndre Swift prove to be able to hit the holes that wasn't, that wasn't there? That supposedly wasn't there. Can he find, can he find, find them holes? And if he can find those holes and his talent get through the holes and he can do some good things, carry on to be a thing of the past. But you look, you're probably looking at a line that's probably going to be significantly worse than what it was a year ago unless they add some veteran players like Larry Warford. You're probably looking at a line that could be significantly better as they get more experience because you're putting in two rookies in there. You could Steinberg and, and, and Jonah Jackson. And then you bring Big V over it's either going to be a boom or bust for that line overall this season. It's either going to be boom or bust. So, should be very, very interesting to see how it boils down. But me personally, um, I think this is DeAndre Swift's job to lose. Yep, this is his job to lose. This is my humble opinion, man. But hey, let me know what you guys think on the situation. Don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can reach out if you have a business question, cry response, your video request. Keep sharing the videos, man. Appreciate the love, support. One, make a donation, cash out, PayPal in the description. 
Check out the backup channel just in case something happens. Subscribe there, Motor City Sports Talk 2.0. Y'all know what the business is. One time for the one time. It's your boy CJ Goodfellow, Motor City Sports Talk. We gone.